Hello everyone, welcome back for more of King's Quest. Uh, a couple of things I want to talk about just before I start playing. First of all, um, a lot of people complain that the game audio is too loud and then it's drowning out my voice. Uh, that is true. Uh, the problem is there is no volume control in the game. If you look at the game's... Um, whoops, no, don't, don't walk around Graham, I'm trying to activate the menu bar here. Hold on. There we go. Uh, so you have some information here, including this very helpful help screen. Um, you have uh, the option to obviously save and restore your game. You can see inventory items. You can swim, uh, swim, jump, and duck, which is um, mostly not very useful. Well, swimming is obviously useful in the water. Jump and duck are, I think, only used in a couple of very specific circumstances. And you can turn the sound on or off, but I don't want to play with the sound off, but there's no there's no volume control as there was in uh, SCI uh, adventure games. There's also no volume control in the emulator that I'm using, <coughs> and the uh, recording software that I'm using has no option, as far as I know, to edit the volume levels. So the only recourse that I really had was editing uh, or changing the volume levels in Windows, because in Windows 7, which I'm running on this computer, uh, you can edit the volume levels for each individual program. However, the sound for this game is already pretty much all the way down. It's as far down as I can get it without muting it. So I really had no options in terms of reducing the game's volume. So what I ended up doing is just uh, implementing microphone boosts. So I didn't really want to do that because it introduces some distortion. I think it might make my voice sound a little strange, but uh, I have my microphone boost turned way up now, and so my voice should be much louder and much more audible. Um, so the game will still be equally loud, but my voice should hopefully be able to compete with it now. Also, uh, in terms of the game itself, uh, somebody told me in my previous video that I messed up by reading the, the bowl. Allegedly, so you get one point, I don't know why I'm looking at my inventory because I don't have the bowl anymore, I already gave it to the um, uh, the woodcutter and his wife. Uh, if you Apparently, if you read the bowl, as I did, you get a point for doing that. But if you type fill to fill the bowl without reading it, you get two points for doing that. So in essence, I robbed myself of a point by doing it that uh, the way that I did. Uh, I may end up costing myself in the sense that I may end up finishing the game with less than the uh, maximum possible score. Uh, which I don't usually like doing. I usually want to get the, uh, the full score for the game. Uh, but apparently, I may have... Uh, I may have uh, messed myself up a little bit in the way that I did that. I'm not too worried about it, though. I'm still going to do all the things in the game that you can do to get points. So if I end up with uh, with not getting full points, then that's pretty much a problem with the game's scoring system and not with myself as far as I'm concerned. I don't see any reason why I should not be able to get points for filling the bowl just because I read the bowl before filling it. That makes absolutely no sense. But then I'm applying video game logic to, or I'm, I'm applying r real sensible logic to a video game. And as we know in the world of video games, video game logic applies. And in video game logic, if you don't do exactly what the designers expected of you, then you cost yourself points. So anyway, that said, did I uh, load the most recent? Actually, I still only have one saved game, so OK. So. Um, if you look at her score, you can see we're already almost halfway to getting the um, half of the points. Yeah, we're, we're almost halfway to getting all the points in the game. So does that mean we're about halfway through the game? Uh, I don't know. We're getting close. I mean, we, we probably have finished about a third of the game at least, maybe more. So what do I want to do in this video? Do I want to do the thing with the carrots? Um, Maybe not. I'm not really in the mood for uh, for carrots right now. Carrots are actually very uh, very versatile, but you sort of have to be in the in the correct frame of mind to want to make proper use of them. Uh, and I don't think Graham is really into that kind of thing right now. So let's see. What I do want to do, I actually, in the first couple of videos, I was playing this game without a map and just wandering around blindly. But now I do have a map that I am making use of because. Uh, This game's world isn't really that big. It's not that difficult to navigate, but um, it's big enough that you might get a few minutes. You might spend a few minutes getting lost and getting turned around if you don't know exactly where you're going. And I don't think I mentioned this, but in case it's not apparent, the game world does wrap, which means that uh, if you keep walking in one direction, like if you keep walking left, eventually you'll end up back in this same 
uh, the same screen. So there's no there's no end of the world, and there's no um, uh, it doesn't go on forever either. It just loops around. I believe I'm just looking at my map that I have here in front of me. It looks like the game's world is eight screens horizontally and six vertically. So six times eight, that's what? That's 48, right? Gosh, if I'm forgetting my times tables. I'm pretty sure that's 48. <laughs> so 48 screens in the game. Um, that's not that many, but it's enough that, you know, if you if you just wander around blindly, you might get lost eventually. So I am uh, making use of a map to sort of aid me a little bit. Let's see. Um, here is a goat pen, uh, which I... I'm also not really in the mood for a goat right now, so I think I'll ignore that for the time being. Here is where we came... Oh. oh! This is where we came out of that cave where the dragon uh, had his mirror, uh, and here we see a large friendly bird, but we don't, uh, we don't actually need to make use of the bird right now. We'll, we'll return here and say hi to this bird later, but for now uh, we actually don't want to... We don't quite want to... Uh, interact with that bird just yet. So where I do want to go for this video is I think right here, yes. Okay, this house, this is obviously a very colorful house. Let's take a look at the uh, house, if I can type. This is the sweetest little gingerbread house you ever saw. The walls are cake, the roof is frosting, the chimney looks delicious, and the candy path and cookie fence are unbearably tempting. Hmm. Uh, I have to admit the chimney is probably the most boring looking part of the house, so for Graham to say that the chimney looks delicious uh, might just reveal something about Graham's preferences. I bet, uh, I bet Graham says that to all the houses. Oh, your, your chimney looks delicious. I'd love to partake of your um, chimney stack. Uh, so, let's see, can I look at this walkway or stones or path in the ground? Oh. Well, well, this clarifies things, doesn't it, now? I was trying to figure out if the if the stones in the path are made of some kind of candy or something. Wait, did the, did the message say? I don't think it did. Oh, it, it just says a candy path, so I guess the path is made of out of some kind of hard candy or whatever. And so you can eat uh, you can eat this stuff actually, which I didn't realize at first when I was a kid playing this game. Yeah, you can eat the fence, for example, and the game tells you that it's yummy. Uh, can you eat the path? No, you cannot. Uh, can you eat the chimney? I bet Graham would like that. Oh, the, the game doesn't understand chimney, even though it's, it used the word chimney in this message. Well, a game's parser vocabulary is not always uh, uh, congruent to its uh, to the words that it uses in its. Um, messages. But wh uh, what's really useful to do here is to actually type eat the house, eat the house itself. And when you do that, okay, now it says yum, the house tastes even better than it looks. And you also get two points for doing that. Uh, that's useful because um, if you uh, eat the house like that, you'll actually find, w find out whether, whether anybody's at home or not. Let me go ahead and save my game here. Uh, yeah. And if we come down here, this looks, like, this looks like a very nice little screen until we suddenly find out that there is a witch swooping through the sky trying to catch us. Look out! Look out, Graham! A witch! And she's on a broom! Maybe she's poisonous! And the, the witch is quite fast, as you saw. She whizzed from her position uh, directly to... And by that I don't mean that, I mean that she that trans, that transported herself from her location where she was directly to where we were very quickly. So uh, she swooped down, uh, she grabs, grabs you by the neck and carries you off to a fate worse than death. Oh no, oh no Graham, Graham's not into, he's not into the ladies, that's, uh, it's not, uh, oh wow. Pretty awesome. I don't even remember the game making that witch cackling sound. That's something pretty awesome, actually. As the wicked witch flew over her house, she dropped you into her cage. If you can't get out, you may become the secret ingredient in this witch's brew. And when I first played this game and got into the situation, I thought for sure that there must be some way out, because the game says, if you can't get out. 
Well, as it turns out, that's that's a false premise because there really is no way out. If you get caught, there is no way out of the situation. Try as you will to escape. Your labor will be in vain. I also didn't know what uh, what this meant as a kid. I thought this had something to do with veins, as in veins and arteries. Because I knew what veins were, but I didn't know what in vain meant. And so there we go. Uh, we, we died again. I guess this is a fate worse than death sitting in this cage. Um, but yeah, what, uh, what does sometimes happen is, uh, and it's pretty random, I think it's pretty much random 50-50, uh, is if you, yeah, here we go. So now when we begin to eat the house, a squeaky voice from somewhere says, Never nibble, little mouse! Always nibble at my house! <laughs> and so that's our indication that somebody is at home. And now if we open the door and try to get inside... Surprise, surprise! That's actually really awesome. I, I didn't even realize that the game says surprise, surprise, but this is actually a perfect uh, perfect circumstance under which to say surprise, surprise, open door. The Wicked Witch is home and now she's after you. And so now you, c you can't really outrun the witch. You can very quickly run outside. Um, and of course she won't be able to catch you because Again, video game logic, it's like in Grand Theft Auto, where if you manage to get home, then the police won't be able to follow you inside your house, and so you'll just kind of escape any charges that are against you, because you, you went inside your house, they, they, they can't get you there. So, uh, it's kind of the same thing here, if you run outside quickly, then you can escape the witch, but um, the only way to really get around this problem is just to not have her at home. So when she's cast some kind of spell to keep from escaping, the witch remarks, Oh, how nice of you to come for dinner, cackle, cackle. She pokes and pinches you, then states, This one is too scrawny, so it's into the cage until you fatten up. What is that witch doing? This has made me feel like flying. Okay. Um... I know I'm talking a lot about my childhood memories about this game. I'm just uh, remembering now when I uh, when I was a kid, I spoke with my grandmother about this predicament, and we deliberated for a long time. We deliberated, I think, for days uh, about how can we get past the witch. Every time we started a conversation, the conversation would say, "All right, let's let's put our heads together and try to imagine how can we how can we deal with the witch inside her house." Well, as it turns out, there's no way to deal with her. You just have to go in when she's not at home. And so if I restore my game now... Yes, so this is when she's not at home. Now, there is something in this cupboard up here, but it's probably best to retrieve it later. You do have enough time to get it if you're fast. You don't really have to be that fast, but since I'm here, uh, I might as well come into this room. Off in the distance, you hear a high squeaky voice say, I can smell someone tasty in my house. And it's kind of a warning. Uh, the witch does reappear after a few moments, uh, if she's not at home right away. Once you go inside her house, she'll come here, into the house. But she can't see you in this bedroom off to the side, so... So yeah, so this is what you do. You hide in the bedroom until the witch shows up, and then she says, I'm going to get my oven ready to cook someone for dinner! And so, now she's obviously facing the other way. And what you do is you come up behind her, and... Graham supplies some, uh, obviously, the, the very obvious joke here is to say that he supplies her with some surprise butt sex. Um, I was going to make that joke, but then I realized it was a little too obvious. Uh, but no, what you actually do, uh, in case you've uh, ever read the story of Hansel and Gretel, or even if you haven't, uh, is you're supposed to push the witch into the oven. Uh, I th and I think I might have taken too long. I always know the perfect temperature. It is time to invite someone for dinner. <laughs> Rats. Oh, okay. I took a little too long, didn't I? Okay, let's try, uh, let's try this again. Push witch. Courageously, you manage to push the witch into the oven where she flashes and melts away into a harmless blob. Congratulations. That's nice. Okay, and now we won't see the witch anymore. Actually, if you uh, if you go outside uh, and go one screen south to where the witch pops out, um, pops up in the in the sky, she won't be there anymore. So now we can clean out her house. Let's go ahead and open this cupboard, 
and we can just, I guess we can say look in cupboard, even though it's pretty obvious that's a wedge of cheese. Yeah, sitting on the shelf is a delicious piece of Swiss cheese. So let's take the cheese. And we don't really have to close the cupboard, but I might as well just to be neat. Even though the witch doesn't even live here anymore, now nobody lives here anymore, so it's not really much point, but anyway. And over here in the bedroom, there's really nothing important. There is a bed, which I assume the witch sleeps in. The bed looks hard and uncomfortable, much like the witch herself. There is a carpet on the ground, which I don't think... Yeah, the game, the game doesn't understand carpet or rug. Um, on this table here, there is a note on the table, so let's get the note. And let's read it, because I think we get a point for reading the note. The note reads, Sometimes it is wise to think backwards. Uh, well, yes, that is true. I think that's, uh, I think that is the logic behind strap-ons. But, uh, let's not get into that now. So, uh, that's pretty much it. We can look out the window, and the game says that we see the forest outside, because, uh, that is certainly not something that we would have expected to see outside a house in a forest. And the table, this is the table where she eats her food, and, okay, that's really it. Uh, can we look at the oven? It's an old wood stove and very hot. The fire must have been burning for some time. Uh, that's it. So we, we got rid of the witch, we got the cheese, we got the note, and read the note. That's all we can do inside the witch's house. So we're done there. That's very nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and save again. Okay, so, um, let's take a look at that cheese just for fun. This Swiss cheese looks, fr looks fresh and moist. Gosh, Graham, can you get any more? Okay, never mind. Um, and the note, there is a message written on the note, okay. But it won't, it won't tell you what it is unless you, unless you actually read the note. Okay, so we're getting to the point now where, um, we need to sort of think uh, a little bit step by step about how we're going to plan our moves because there are some things, of course, that you cannot do in this game until you've done certain things first. Like, for example, the cheese enables you to do a certain thing that you couldn't do until you had the cheese. Um, so I'm just trying to think, do we have... Um, like, for example, we saw that bird just a little while ago. Do I have everything I need for the bird now? Let me just think. Let me run through my sort of mental checklist. So what are we, if I get caught by the bird... I am going to need the cheese first. I think that's the first thing I need. Then I will want that and that. Uh, I think I have everything. So actually, uh, yeah, I can go and uh, I can go and and say hello to our uh, our birdie friend again if I can find him or her. Birdie num 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 birdie num num. Oh, oh, I'm just giving the birdie his num-nums. Where's the, oh, oh, the bird was to the left of here. All right. Let's wait for the bird. Is he going to show up? The bird doesn't... A lot of the characters... I think most of the characters in this game don't reliably show up. Sometimes when you go into a screen, they just won't appear, and so you'll have to leave the screen, thus, and then just come back. All right, let's see the bird. Bird is the word. Well, don't you know about the bird? Well, everybody knows that the bird is the word. There we go. I'm sorry, I recently saw Full Metal Jacket again, and that uh, that song is kind of in my head because you know there's that one scene in the movie where the where that song plays. Okay, so in this game you press the number zero to jump like that, and what you have to do is jump into the bird so that it'll pick you up and catch you. Uh, there we go. Where could this giant bird be taking you? Here's some more we haven't seen before. This is not something that you want to do until you're sure that you have all the things you need. Um, because once you're here, you are stuck here, and you can't get out until you do everything that you need to do to escape. And if you don't have all the necessary inventory items, then you are 
screw. You basically you can't win the game at that point. So we've been here before, but on the other side of the river. Now we've made it to the other side, and so what we need to do is get the mushroom. You reach down and pick a fat mushroom. Hey, don't be rude to the mushroom. It's not a fat mushroom. It's a, uh, it's a well-rounded mushroom. And you cannot go to the right from here because it's all blocked up by bushes and uh, and rocks. And can you go down from here? I don't think you. Oh, you can, but it just takes you to this to another screen here, which is also blocked by a river. So, so the only thing to do now is to fall down this hole. And from here we can only go south. And even though there really appears to be no source of lighting, uh, it's actually quite bright down here. There's really no, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, darkness or anything like that. We don't need a source of lighting. Ah. And here is another uh, sort of, oh, even squeaks. So this is a huge mouse or rat or whatever it is. And he, um, or she, but I'm guessing it's probably he. Very much like the dragon, um, it appears to be constrained to the left side of the screen. So actually, uh, you don't have to worry about it running up to you and killing you. It will kill you if, if you walk into it. Be careful around this rat next time. He's dangerous. I was right. It is a it is a male rat. <laughs> I like I like <laughs> I like how disarrayed. Graham's body is drawn for this death scene. It, it's kind of one of one of his shoes is off, and his arms appear to be splayed in a dramatic fashion. It's a very dramatic sort of death pose. Okay, um, so as you can probably imagine, given that this is a large rat, of course, what you want to do to the rat is give it some cheese. The rat drools at the sight of the cheese and snatches it from your hand. You might want to count your fingers. The rat scrambles to the wall and seems to magically merge with it. Okay, and with that, we can safely go through this door. The leprechauns revere the power of the four-leaf clover. With it in your possession, they will leave you absolutely alone. Because they're a leprechaun! So, um, there are basically two screens here. What was that? There's some music playing, even though... Okay. The King's Magic prevents you from getting close enough to harm him. So, what you can do... Uh, what I did the first time I played this game was... I just got the shield. Because the shield is right here, and you can just walk up to it and take it. Nobody will try to stop you for some reason. So, um, you can do that. This is the Magic Shield, which is one of the three treasures that we're trying to get. But, for extra points, and to really be cool and awesome, like the cool people that we are... What you need to do is, in this room, play the fiddle. Let me go ahead and just save the game. Not that there's any danger, but just just for giggles. Let's go ahead and play the fiddle, because, as we know, leprechauns being stereotypically Gaelic, or um, Celtic, I guess, uh, love music. Leprechauns love fiddle music! Have you ever seen such frenzy dancing? Totally involved in the music, they dance right out of the room. Um, what I would like to do, for no other reason at all than that it's kind of humorous to do, I'd like to see if I can... Uh huh. After his followers have danced away, the King of the Leprechauns realizes he can lead best by following, and leaves, forgetting his beautiful scepter. What you can do here is exactly this. I take a very great personal childish amusement in doing this. The king cannot walk through you, and so if you just stand here, he will continue to do this until, um, well, basically until nothing. I mean, there's no limit to how long he will attempt to walk in place like this. I realize it's childish, but I just can't really... For some reason, I can't get enough of this because I'm just immature that way. Can we look at the king? The king is leaving! No, he's not! He's trying to leave, but I am stopping him because he does not have the ability to step around me. Can I talk to him? He ignores your words. That's not very nice. Can we kiss him? No, not now. Can we kill him? No. 
Can we uh, take his crown? Okay, this is King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. That's the full title of the game. And I realize that there's no circumstance in the game where you actually have to interact with the crown, and so there's no reason for the game to understand that noun, but let's let's be a little bit reasonable here. Can we kind of meet each other halfway here, game? I mean, come on. All right, whatever. I'll go and get out of his way, and he can leave and walk out the exit. So let's go ahead and get this scepter, and then we can get the shield. Really? You're serious. You, you put it in your pocket. The shield's like three times as wide as Graham is, and Graham put puts it in his pocket. Wow. I actually do remember when I was a kid, uh, my mother actually asked me the question, where, where does he put all these things that he's carrying? I mean, like, there was that huge gold egg. Where Did he, did he just stuff it in his pants or something? Where I mean, things like, okay, the pebbles I can see, or, or a note or something like that, or a ring. Yeah, that's one thing. But where does he stick a, a whole giant golden egg, or that mirror, or the shield? Well, now I know the answer. He just puts them all in his pocket. Because why not? Here is... Where'd everybody go? I mean, all the leprechauns and the king exited out this way, but there's not there's nothing here except this small little hole, which I don't think they could have fit through. And also, we can't fit through it. We also have no way to fit through this hole unless we do something to make ourselves smaller. And that thing is to eat that mushroom, which we picked up before we fell into this cave. So let's go ahead and eat the mushroom. As soon as you swallow the first bite, you have this strange shrinking feeling. Oh, I know what that's like. It's true! You are now no bigger than a mouse! And now we have to very quickly run outside like that. You feel a stretching sensation. Oh no, Graham, now's not the time, sorry. Oh, oh, you're back to your original size. There we go. Great success. Okay, so we have uh, two of the treasures. We, of course, have the mirror from before, and now we have the shield. It is made from titanium and edged with emeralds. Um, I know what titanium is, but did they actually have titanium uh, metalworking in medieval times? Because I'm going to assume that this game doesn't take place in in our modern present day. It's apparently it, it's fairly obviously meant to be a medieval era adventure. So I don't think that they. Gosh, I'm curious now, but I really think that titanium working is a, a modern thing, because in that time they still made shields and armor and such out of iron, didn't they? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a uh, blacksmith, and unfortunately I probably never will be, but, uh, but what I am is a Let's Player, and... I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for coming along with me, everyone. Next time, we will continue playing King's Quest as we go on our magical endeavor to get the final treasure, the magic chest. Oh, I can't wait for that. I'll bet you... Uh, I, I bet you... <clears throat> English, I can has it. I'll bet you are all excited to witness this uh, exciting and momentous conclusion to the game. So, thanks again for watching, everyone. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye for now.